Hey, you guys. Hello. I wish I could see your comments on the screen, but I can't. So it's just me tonight. Faith is working and um, Brooke is uh, behind the camera on the phone. She'll be giving me all of your questions, helping with links and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna give everybody just a couple more minutes to jump in here. We are gonna be kind of like sticking to a schedule with this live because CrabCon starts tonight and all of the VIP people wanna get over there and shop. So uh, we are gonna try to end this live at 545. So just to let you know, get your questions in quickly so that we can get started right away. Guys, I haven't put makeup on or done my hair in since we had Zoe. <laughs> Kaylee asks, how is your summer going? Well, great. It's really super busy now with the Zoe, but that's fine. We kind of were hoping that this would happen. So, um, yeah, it's great. How's yours? It's fast. We go back to school so early this year. I have to be back at, on August 2nd, teachers. And uh, that is so, so early. So I'm trying to soak up the, the rest of these few weeks as much as possible. Let me tilt this down just a little bit so y'all can see more of the chrysal. This view maybe is a little bit unconventional for us. You can see in the closet, those are the 2018 Captain Brand Babies in that tank. And next to it, it's kind of dark right there, this tank is going to be the uh, transition land tank for our babies and we can get them to land. So that's what we need to be working on, getting ready pretty soon. So we ordered some stuff for that today actually. We needed a heater and we need a lid, but 40 gallon breeders, are re it's really difficult to find a lid for them. And so we're probably gonna have one made, um, but we need to go and do that. <laughs> do that. All right, you wanna start um, explaining CrabCon? Okay, guys, right here, Buy your CrabCon tickets at www.crabcon.org. It is not too late to get a ticket. Tonight is VIP shopping, which the VIP tickets are sold out, but there are still other tickets that you can get and you will still have access to the shopping. You just won't be early tonight. It will start tomorrow. Um, and so go buy your tickets. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what that website looks like and how to do this. Okay, so this is crabcon.org right here. All right, so we have two days left. All right, um, you have full access, which is $60. That means you have access to the playbacks. Um, and then a $10 is basic ticket gets you all of the talks and all of the shopping. You just don't have playbacks, so it's all live. So you would need, you will have access to listen to any of the talks live. Over here on the left side, you guys see scrolling over here are all the people talking this weekend at CrabCon. I mean, $10 to listen to all of these experts and all the cool stuff that they have to say is so, so worth it. Plus $10 to be able to go to go hermit crab shopping. Honestly, like you're gonna have tons and tons of awesome stuff to look at, food, shells, decor, um, mer just merch from a crab merch, so, so much. Moss and lichens, bark, leaves. I mean, the list goes on. Like if you need something for your hermit crabs tank, you can find it at CrabCon, seriously. And they have lots of great sales going on. Even if you're not VIP, you have they have lots of sales. So that $10 ticket is for sure worth it. Like this is still scrolling. Some of you guys have asked us about isopods and bioactive tanks. There's a talk about that, right? Um, so, so much stuff. So what, what is CrabCon, if people don't know? Is yeah, that what you I'm gonna let this play again so that you guys can look at these talks while I'm talking, okay? So like I said, um, you can see the full access basic tickets right here. Like I said, VIPs are sold out. So CrabCon is a conference where you go and learn everything you could possibly think about hermit crabs. There is basic hermit crab information given. There, um, there are just different um, experts there talking about 
you know, more advanced hermit crab keeping. So, um, I, I mean, you guys can see all the talks right here. They, there's just so many things. I know there's going to be like a go to Dollar Tree and see how can you set up a tank using the Dollar Tree, I think is there, which is kind of cool, uh, about shells. Um, there are some kind of like cool rescue stories that are going to be talked about. Foraging and how do you get all of your foraging ready. Um, we did, we're doing a main stage talk. Ours is tomorrow night. And all, um, our talk is all about captive bread, adopting captive bread babies. Um, it's the, you are going to have presenters worldwide, which is so, so cool. On this page, you can even see who all the presenters are and where they're from. So, um, bioactive substrate and that sort of thing, okay? So, um, so yeah, so that is crabcon.org. So, go get your tickets. Go get your tickets. And then to actually go to the conference tomorrow, you go to crabcon.online. I should have made a it's crowdcon.online once you buy your ticket. Okay. I think crowdcon.org has a link there too, though. Yeah. Or you probably get something in your email with your ticket and you can just click on that. Like, there's, yeah, it's pretty um, easy. Like, the, the whole conference website is pretty easy to use and find, and you have, yeah. How does it work? People are asking, is it Zoom or? Oh, okay. So, the main stage speakers have all pre-recorded their talks, their speeches. Um, so normally CrabCon would, would be in person and the very first CrabCon was in person. And so these main stage speakers would be in front of you giving a, a speech at, like at a conference. But because of COVID um, last year, it went to being online and um, just to play it safe because most of this year, we weren't really sure what was gonna happen. You know, presenters need to be preparing early on. And so they went ahead and made the call to make it online this year as well. Um, and so yeah, all your main stage speakers have recorded speeches or talks about their topic. And so um, Mary, I believe it's Mary, will do an introduction uh, about the speaker and then their video will play. Now, during the video, during the talk, there is a live chat going on. So you can ask any questions about that topic while you're watching the video. And um, the speaker is available, I believe, for most of them. I mean, some of our international speakers might not be because like, could be you know 2 a.m. for them it's 2 p.m. here um, but I think Mary tried to schedule their talks to where it would work out in different time zones but anyway somebody will be there um, an expert will be there answering questions during the chat there are also live sessions which um, are there's so many and they're just a wide range of things like I know that Sunabita Creations she makes um, her cried food out of her house um, she and I are going to be doing a live session where we make hermit crab food um, for you guys, teach you like some of just basic recipes and things like that. So those are live. Those are done kind of like a Zoom. So we log in like this, this kind of a platform. So we would log in and talk with you guys um, live. And there's the chat that goes on with that as well. Um, so yeah, and then there's also always during the whole entire conference, there's like just a chat room where you can go in and just, you know, ask questions and talk with other hermit crab owners and experts will be there throughout the weekend um, and things like that. So it's a way, it's a really, really cool. And honestly, like $10 to have all of that. The shops are open the whole weekend. So you can go into the, it's called the expo, I believe is what's labeled on that platform. So you can go to the expo and um, the shop owners are there to answer your questions. Also, they have like a little video that talks about their, their products um, and it's pretty easy. Um, to use uh, use as well. So, did that answer your questions? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's CrabCon. And we have some exciting news from Crab Central Station, you guys. We have our merch shop there at the Expo this weekend for CrabCon. So if you want any Crab Central Station merch, head on over and grab it. Also, exclusive CrabCon, we have two new t-shirts. And I'm gonna show you guys those designs right now. You get a sneak peek, no one else knows about yeah. these. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see. This one, Brooke designed this t-shirt, guys. It's so cute. It comes on several different colors. So when you go to our shop, then you can see what the colors are and order your size and that sort of thing. 
And then I designed this one. So at the very first CrabCon is when we could adopt captive bred babies. And that's these, these guys right here. We drove all the way just to New York um, to get them. And then last summer, even though it was an online event, you could still adopt captive bred babies. And that's what these guys are in this tank right here. Um, and so yeah, CrabCon really kind of centered around a place where we could all come and adopt the very first captive bred babies. So I just wanted a t-shirt that was like adopted at CrabCon. So anyway, yeah, these are two t-shirts. They're $15 either one. You get to pick your color. There's some choices. And so let me show you guys how you order those if you're interested. They are already available. You can get yep. them now. Yeah, so this is our website, you guys, www.crabcentralstation.com. You go here to the CCS merch shop. And these are unisex shirts, so men or women. So you're going to click on there. And then there's a scroll bar of all of our different designs. And so scroll through until you find the CrabCon exclusive shirts that you're wanting. You click on the shirt you want, and then we'll come up your options for colors and size. Um, so, so yeah. Also, on, while we're on here, guys, look, CCS Journey to Land right underneath the merch shop. That's our blog about our breeding. So if you want to, we get a lot more in detail there um, about what's going on than all of our blog can show you because the blogs would be like so long if we shared everything. But we are trying to blog everything so that we have a record to go back to and read your tier. And if that's something that you're interested in, then um, you can head over to our website and go to Journey to Land. We are currently in attempt number three, but you can read about attempt one and two, which was last summer in that those were both Ecuadorians. So we, t we talk a lot about both of our attempts from last summer and this summer. And so if you're just kind of interested to see where all that's coming from, you can go read, read about so that. So 10 minutes we can answer questions about CrabCon. Um, okay. How long is CrabCon? Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it's a three day event. Which means there is three days worth of talks available. Yes. If you go to crabcon.org, you can see the whole schedule. You can see actually when every each individual talk is. If you want to look at like your own work schedule, you know, if you're thinking about that $10 um, pass, just to see what you would be available to watch, you can go and see the schedule there um, at crabcon.org. All right, where is Crabcon normally held? Well, the original first one was held in Longport, Lockport, Lockport, Lockport New, New York. York. Um, so we drove from Texas to New York, y'all. It was so fun. What a great trip. Anyways, it will not be there next time because Mary has moved. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're not sure. I think they're trying to look at a more central location so that, you know, be a little bit easier for people to get there from all over. So maybe like Missouri-ish. I have not heard. They have not released it, but, um, I think they are trying to plan an in-person and virtual for next year because the nice thing about going virtual these last two years is that it's worldwide. Um, and so that's completely amazing. And we don't want to lose that. So I think they're going to try and do both in-person and virtual next year. But this year it's totally virtual. Yes. And which is awesome. So anyone can do it. Um, let's see. Any other questions about CrabCon? And then I guess we can open that box, but let's just preface if anyone here is a VIP warning, I guess give them a warning that we're about okay. to open the box. We are going to open our swag. This is VIP swag for CrabCon. So anybody that is VIP, if you haven't gotten your swag box, well, everybody I think should have by now. Yeah. But just a warning, if you're a VIP member and haven't opened your box, you're going to be spoiled. Yes. And those of you, I'm sorry, VIP tickets are sold. So we, we did a video, or I think we went live, when tickets went on sale. And we told you guys, get your VIP if you want it, because they will sell out. There's only so many VIP tickets because of the swag. Like, you have to plan for that. Um, and that's why there's only so many tickets. But we saved ours. We haven't opened it yet, because we want to open it with you guys. Sorry. If you're a VIP member and didn't get your swag, then definitely reach out to the... Street Journal and um, see if you can find your swag. Yes, because there's a lot of coupons in here for shopping, like tonight. So y'all reach out right now if you didn't get your swag. 
All right, so this is the official CrabCon 2021 swag tote. Isn't it cute? So, so cute. Um, I can't share with you guys all the codes, obviously, because it's for VIPs, but I can tell you kind of what's in here. We have some Hobo Hermy food. Soon to be the Creations food. The Hermit Crab Patch food. Christine's. Oh, really oh sorry. Christine's crab care food. She's too excited. I <laughs> am. Look at this cute sticker. Home is where the crabs are. Isn't that precious? Oops, I knocked the table. I think that's Christine's think, crab care yeah. as well. Oh, and then um, VIP code. Top secret. Um, we have Sunabita Curiosities, a special exclusive CrabCon 2021 pin and code for shopping. So I'm going to cover that up. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm putting this on right now, actually. Let's see. Go. Oh no, I dropped it. I dropped it in the bag. There we go. No. Okay, maybe I'm not putting it on right now. What are you trying to do? What is it? I was oh, trying to pin. pin. Yeah, I lost the back to it. It's down. That's from Cena Vita yeah. Creations, right? No. No, 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 no. Oh. No, no, no. Curiosities. I'm sorry. I get that. I already said it. But I dropped the back on the floor. Okay. Just kidding. Not putting it on right now. Okay. Because of crabs, moss, and such. Guys, this is where we buy all of our moss and our lichens. Best stuff. Best stuff. BioFX. They got fancy with their VIP code scratch off. <laughs> this is Hermit Grub. We've shared that with you guys. Heard of them before. More Cinebino creations and a code. Shopping codes. Look at all this stuff, you guys. Just two old crabs. I don't think there's a coat on there. Look how cute. Oh my goodness. Who is this from? Do you remember? Oh my goodness. I don't remember the who makes this. Again, is that CrabCon if you want to go. But she's going to have all kinds. Uh, she hand makes these like lunch boxes, bags, towels curtains I don't know there's just so many things but this um, is a little like molting window so you just put on here like a um, piece of tape even would work or a suction cup put a little suction cup that has a hook and you hang it on there and then you put this over where your crabs molting isn't that cute earth water fire studios this is an exclusive crab con little feeding dish made by Mary Akers. Isn't that adorable? I love that. This is a little net basket with shells. Isn't this cute? And some shells. This is from Shell Home 15. Simply Shells Decor. Simply shells decor. And then there's coupon. Look at those little baby shells. We'll have a baby jump in those in no time. All right, this is Katapa. This is my earrings. I got these last year at CrabCon. Y'all probably seen me wear them. I love them, but they have different colors, different designs. They're very well made. Like, I love them. Permit Harbor Rescue and Adopt um, Adoption. This is some leaves in a coupon code. We have some Canadian chubby crab and VIP code. You're doing some shopping tonight. Professor Pinchy's Puzzle Emporium, VIP code on here. Oh my goodness, this little book is the cutest. Groceries for Hungry Hermits. 
This little pamphlet is the cutest thing, like, and it has, like, safe foods in it. So you can put it in your purse or your bag or your car so that if you're at the store wondering, like, you always have this handy. That is so sweet. This is from Mary Acres Earth Water Fire Studios as well. Awesome. That is so cute. All right, you guys. That is the CrabCon 2021 swag for this year. Like, this is so much. Like, so much. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I can't even hold it all. I need to find the back to my pin. Dropped it on the floor. Guys, this is amazing. Very generous vendors that donated to the swag bags. And like I said, all of these things that we just got in our swag bag, those are all people that have shops at the expo. You guys, so you can go and shop at all of those places um, this weekend at CrabCon. So, and they have deals, like I was saying. So yeah, you need to go and check them out. It's amazing, amazing. Do you want to explain CrabCon again, how it works, all that for people who are just joining, since we have some time? Okay. CrabCon, buy your tickets right here, crabcon.org. It's not too late to buy tickets. The VIP tickets are sold out. There's just a you know, small amount of those, and when they were gone, they were gone. But you still have your um, full access and your basic tickets. You want me to play the? Sure. Okay, I'll play the thing for you guys again, just in case. All right, so this is the website, crabcon.org. And go here for all your questions can be answered here, to be honest with you. So your full access is $60 and your basic access is $10. And the biggest difference between these two things is that you have access to playback talks, which means you don't have to actually be there live. The, the $10 basic means that um, they're going to be playing live and so you would have to be present to hear them. Are you showing me? I'll just show you that if you need to see. Oh. So yes, and now scrolling on the left side are all of the speakers that are going to be on the main stage um, talking. So this is an online event, so these speeches have all been pre-recorded. However, the um, speakers will be live during the time of their talk, and there will be a live chat going on while the video is playing. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to type it in right there and um, get your answers. So it's really pretty cool. There's um, live sessions throughout all three days of, all, I mean, like so many different things um, in the live sessions. And then there's also just like an open chat room that, you know, Hermit Crab ho hobbyists can go and meet one another and chat and ask questions and just have conversations of all things Hermit Crab related. So um, it's really a great event. I mean, for $10 to have access to all of this um, expert advice and um, also to have access to the expo which is all of those shops that I just named and more um, and so you can go shopping with your $10 basic ticket as well so the expos are open throughout the weekend all right now we can move on to the second half and then if you still have crowdcon questions let me know on to you in the chat but we're gonna move on to these others. okay so moving on to the Zoe, it is time to feed the Zoe. So we thought we would, like really, this is the time that we feed them, one of the times that we feed them. I kind of feel like I'm a mom of babies all over again. Those of you that have young kids, I mean, it really feels like every few hours you're feeding the babies. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's what time it is. It's time to feed the babies. So we thought we would do that live with you guys so you can just see what we do. So the first thing that we do is we turn down the bubblers. Um, can you see these bubblers? I can't tell because of this crap on ticket thing. Is that in their way also? Yes, you can remove it by clicking the little eye. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to move this so you guys can see. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Brick is awesome. Okay, so these bubblers we have going all the time. It helps to create that tide effect in the chrysals to help the Zoe. Um, move about the chrysal. But when we feed them, we want them to be able to catch the food and stop and eat. And so we turn these bubblers down. So that's step one. I'm going to turn this one down and Brooke's going to turn the other one down for me. I don't turn them all the way off. I just make it where it's like barely trickling. 
Um, so yeah, and then take off the lids. So we have lids on these chrysals to help with evaporation. Those of you that have been watching our vlogs um, know that as the water evaporates, it creates the salinity to rise. And we need the salinity to stay at about 35 PPT S, PPTs, PPT. PPTs, PPT, parts or something, parts, no, PPT. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so putting a lid on there helps keep that evaporation down so that the salinity, we don't have spikes in salinity. Um, and just while we're here, um, guys, so there's two of these chrysals. Let me try to, okay, so there's two of these chrysals right here. And then back here, it's hard to see, uh, but this is our 10 gallon holding tank. So we've even had some questions on our, um, on YouTube about how we're switching out the water since these are not filtered. So this holding tank is filtered and also aerated um, and it's also heated so that when we do our water changes, um, you know, we will take some of this water out and we will replace it with that water that is at their correct salinity and the correct temperature and it's been filtered um, so that we don't shock the Zoe. So that's why we have that. And so every water change after we fill these up, we're making more salt water, putting it in the holding tank so that it can cycle and get the right temperature and all that fun stuff. All right. So we have a few questions. The first one is, how often do you have to do maintenance with the Zoe? Um, so, sorry, that's kind of loud. Um, so we, right now we do two water changes a day, morning and night. Tomorrow, actually, we might change that up a little bit and try a third one. Um, watch the vlog to figure out why. Um, and then we feed them every few hours. So there's four we feed feedings a day. Uh, seven, and then whenever we finish with the morning water change, we feed again. And then we feed at 12, 5, and then 7 in the evening. We'll have to do a daily routine. Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm using a medicine cup that we've cleaned out thoroughly and a pipette. And I'm just getting some of this holding tank water and putting it in here. Usually I'll just dip this back here because it's faster that way. Okay. There's no exact to this. Okay, so now you guys can see that I have a little bit of water in here. So now what I'm, I'm going to do is take the foods that we're feeding and I'm going to put them in this little cup and mix it up so that when we put it into the chrysal, it kind of disperses evenly and it's not like clumped up or, you know, like uh, doesn't the powders of the food don't like sit on the top of the water. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be doing. So we're feeding gonio powder, chlorella, reef pulse, and instant baby brine. These I don't put in the water. Um, they disperse pretty easily when we just put them in the tank with the bubblers on, so uh, it's not a powder. So I just put the powders in the little water cup. So I'm going to show you guys like how little amount that we actually feed. It's crazy. This is the gonio powder. Okay. The next question is, there's got to be a better way to, to do water changes. Fish keepers do it with minute brine. What about a screen at the end of the siphon or maybe a cycled salt tank? So little amount. Um, look, I am all for an easier way. <laughs> You're not going to get any argument from me. Um, all I can say is right now, this, this is not the first time it's been, this has been attempted, right? There's, this has actually been going on for several years, several years worldwide, a lot of different people. And there are a handful of people that have been successful in getting that you know getting the zoe to land to be hermit crab um, land hermit crab mary acres has been the most successful meaning that she's gotten the the most you know to land so we're following her methods um she wasn't successful her first try or second try or third try right so it took her a long time as well and so all i can say is a lot of things have been tried i'm not against ideas that i love that we have a community and that you guys are telling us your ideas. Um, I'm reading your comments. I'm trying to get back to you as quickly as I can, but 
you know, this is how we learn and this is how we're going to improve the method. Um, and so I am definitely gonna send over your suggestions um, to Mary because she's mentoring us and just say, hey, have you tried this? What about this idea? Um, CrabCon's a great place to talk about these because a lot of people who are breeding, interested in breeding, have tried breeding, go to CrabCon. And so that's a great like chat room to be in, in and asking these types of questions. So I love that you guys are giving us your suggestions and asking these questions. And I really do hope that we can find an easier way. Like I am the first to be. Is there a reason that we um, do it the way we do right now? And you know, what about a smaller mesh or something? Can you just explain why we chose not to do that? Why we chose not to use a filter? Yeah. Because Mary doesn't? No, no, because they get sucked in. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, any kind of filter, the Zoe are so small, they're gonna get sucked in the filter. And even a sponge filter, even though it gets sucked into the filter, they're gonna get sucked into that sponge and like be stuck there. They're not really good swimmers, especially in the beginning. Um, and so that's the big thing with the filter. And a lot of people have tried it, isn't it? Yeah. All these people have been doing this throughout all the years, have already tried filters and, and everything they can. Um, to try to filter the water because obviously this is not, it's really hard to clean the water twice a day. Um, <laughs> Believe me, like if there is a way to filter yeah. it, I'm on it. As for yeah. something small that can go around the siphon so you're sucking in the water and not the babies, we tried. We tried pantyhose. We tried putting pantyhose on the end of our siphon. Went right through. Went right through. So you're, you're talking about very, very fine mesh to the point where then the food debris wouldn't get through. Um, I mean, these guys get stuck in the food debris. That's how small they are. Yeah. And so So then I just put this in. Sorry, we would me. love to find a way to make it easier, but that's why we have Keep sending your ideas, though, because this is yeah. how science advances. Like, having these conversations, talking about these things, this is how yeah. it helps. So the next question is, why is there water between the chrysal and and why is there a bubbler? Okay, so this water right here is just fresh, regular tap water, fresh tap water. The water in the chrysal is salt water that we regulate and, and keep an eye on, right? This water right here is heated. That's what this is back here. This is an aquarium heater. And the reason that we have a bubbler in there well, hold on, let me back up. So we have to heat this water because the Zoe need to be at about somewhere between 82 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, you can't put a heater in the Chrysol because the Zoe will hit the heater and die. So instead we have to heat the water around the Chrysol, kind of like a double bro uh, broiler, like anybody that cooks sweets and stuff, like when you're melting chocolate. Um, you put it in another pan that has water and you heat that water and that melts the chocolate. So this water is actually heating the, the chrysal water. The reason that we have a bubbler here in the middle is because we were noticing in the beginning that um, our temperature was not really getting to the degree that we needed it to and it wasn't consistent. And so we decided to put a bubbler here to move the water around the chrysal so that the temperature would be more consistent throughout the entire chrysal and it worked great. So that's why we have a bubbler there. Um, how much has it costed to maintain and set up stuff for the babies? Good I question. I don't know if we have an exact number because this is the second year. So we had a lot yeah. of stuff, but we had to buy stuff. Every year it costs different amounts. Yep. Okay, this is the instant baby brine. I just have this same stick that I was using for the powdered stuff. So you have to kind of mix it up because it gets kind of cakey-like. And then I actually wipe it all off of the stick so that the only thing on there is just like what's left over. And you'll see that. That's probably too much. I'm wiping off some more. <laughs> okay. And then I just stick the stick in here and it kind of floats off of it. And yeah, then they can eat it. All right, Julie asks, do they react to things like noise or movement? Could like vibration from a speaker or something startle them away from the bottom so you can clean it? We've never we tested it. We haven't tested it. I wouldn't think so because they have the bubblers 
in the chrysal and then we have this bubbler here as well they don't see they don't seem phased by the bubbler at all they don't try to avoid it um they just kind of float around really yeah <laughs> interesting question that would be cool to test out though and that see. would be cool okay they gonna, do swim away from the pet pet sometimes bubbler's up i'm gonna feed the other chrysal now Running out of space here. Let's see other questions. That's all the questions I got. Oh wow. Anyone else have questions? I'm gonna feed the other price now. I guess you can just give a general update if you want. A general update. Try not to give away too much for you the You have next. to wait for the vlog. Yeah, today was a day. Um, we have very clean chrysals. There's a reason for that. Um, I think they're doing pretty good. I can give you a number update. Yeah. Would you like to know about how many we have? I'm sure they want to know. Um, and the fact that I can give you a number maybe gives you a clue as to what kind of day it's been and why our crystals are very, very clean. <laughs> yeah, give them a number. Go for it. Okay. So, um, and spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get this just right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you gotta focus. Make sure you don't overfeed or yeah. then you're gonna have issues later on. Okay, so here's our second one. All right, so this is Chrysal 1, whoops, Chrysal 1 right here. And this is, has all the Zoe that were properly spawned in the water. This is Chrysal 2, and these are all the Zoe that were um, eggs on the sand that we hatched ourselves in this jar. All right, afterwards, just to see if they would live, and they hatched. So in this Chrysal, um, we can say that we have somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200. Estimated. Pro probably more, but about 1,000 to 1,200 estimated. And then in this chrysal over here, um, we have probably closer to 1,500. Yep. So, yep. We can't give you the exact because we, we don't, we haven't counted every single one of them. But yeah, and they're doing pretty good. And salinity was perfect today. I was so excited about that. So we figured out the light issue. Those right. of you following us? They're saying um, the Zoe are almost microscopic, question? Yes. They're getting bigger now, actually. Um, they can be seen by the human eye. They can. Microscopic technically means they can't, so, but we call them microscopic sometimes. Okay. To me, when I say seen by the human eye, I think I should be able to look in here and see it. Can you see them? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I have to get, like, this close to see them <laughs> and then speaking of you want to without a light oh yeah without a light I mean you can hardly see them so here's a video so we've been telling you guys how they come to the light and um, there they are coming to the light you can see the bubbler behind them like that gives you a good perspective of size so they are so small so small and you can see here that they're mostly translucent, like you can, um, you can see through them, except their eyes, which reflect light. You can see it in this video. And their like structure, part of their internal structure is um, iridescent, like also kind of reflects light a little bit. Um, so that's how you can see them when you're doing a water change. Yeah, they're so tiny and see-through, so that's <laughs> fun. All right, let's see. 
our camera has a really hard time focusing on the babies because they're just so small. And then you can see in this video too, like the live Artemia are now swimming around. And so, you know, the camera's like, do I focus on that? Mm -hmm. And then there's the bubblers that sometimes get in the picture. So then the camera is trying to focus on the bubbler. Anyway. All right, they're asking if this attempt ends up being a failure, will we immediately try again or will we wait to try again? Well, so this is the thing about breeding hermit crabs in captivity. You can't make your hermit crabs mate. I, I mean, they just do. So if our hermit crabs have more eggs, then we will try again. So we already know for sure we have one Ecuadorian confirmed with eggs. And um, I have seen the strawberries mating and I have seen another set of Ecuadorians mating. I have not confirmed eggs in either of them yet. My little straw, oh, we also saw purple pincher mating. Um, I'm, uh, my little strawberry, I should be able to see the eggs, but she does not want to share that with me. She's like very <laughs> modest. So I'm just waiting for her to turn towards the glass in a way that I can get a flashlight inside of her shell and kind of see her turning the eggs. That's how you can um, verify and confirm that you have them. I'll keep looking. It's early on, so I'm not too worried about it. But, um, but yeah. So if we have more eggs, we'll give it another try. We have a couple minutes left. Get your questions in. Yeah, we have about four minutes to go. We just want to say thank you to you guys for watching, for supporting us, sending all of your encouraging comments. Like this is a roller coaster of, of a process. It's very tiring. Um, you know, when you look in here and you think you've lost a bunch of them, it just breaks your heart and you're like, no, what happened? And you second guess yourself, did I feed too much? Did I feed not enough? Is my light too close? Do I not have enough light? Do I, you know, is the salinity too high? Is it too low? Is the temperature too high? Is it too low? Is it, I mean, you just like everything you're doing have I done enough water changes? Not enough. Did I take enough water out? Are the bubblers too high? Are they not high enough? <laughs> Do I need another bubbler? I mean, it's it's constant, constantly second guessing if you're doing the right thing. So we appreciate you guys. All right. We'll take one more question. Does anyone have another question? I think I've gone through them all. Don't forget to get your CrabCon tickets, you guys. It's definitely worth it. $10, go shopping. Oh, here we go. What will we do with all of them? Slash, how many do you think we'll have? Um, if we get any to land, it probably won't be very many because we have relatively small amount are like from the original hatch, probably because she um, spawned some on the sand. So usually you'll have somewhere between seven and 10,000 Zoe, and we definitely did not start with that many. We haven't had that big of a loss yet. Um, typically speaking, day 11 is a big day. That's our next like huge hurdle, I think, to get through. Um, you typically lose a lot on day 11, but anyway, regardless, however many we get to land, we, we will keep a few because these will be our first, you know, captive bread hermit crabs if we get them there. And um, if there are any others left over, then they will be up for adoption. And what's about the percentage that's, if any make it, that will live? Generally, I think Mary said it was between one and 2% that um, make it, right? So. And yeah. if you're really successful, maybe five. But yeah. just letting you guys know it's, it's just keep in mind, it's really hard. They might not. Yeah, they may make not it. make it. But we learn more, you know, by every attempt. And with you guys, you know, you're sharing your thoughts too. And that helps us all learn. So it's a great community. We appreciate you guys. All right, if you haven't already, if you guys would subscribe to our channel, we would greatly appreciate that. It helps us continue to bring you content. It helps um, our family as well. And so we really appreciate you guys for your support. And like, comment, and share this, and share um, CrabCon with other people. Um, and yeah, 
think that's it, right? If you guys want to support us, we have a button on our website as well where you can donate to the breeding program. Um, so that's a great way to support us if that's something that you're wanting to do. All right, you guys, we will see you at CrabCon. We are headed there right now. Bye.